<laughs> Welcome, everybody. My name is Sarah Gutman, which doesn't sound Italian, but prior to me getting married, my name was Sarah Gudati. Um, and I have been doing this since I was 13 years old. I am 39 now. I am very happy to report I am also a dual Italian citizen. Uh, I am the family tree climber and I also work for Legacy Tree Genealogist. So what I'm hoping to do today is kind of shed some light on the dual Italian American uh, citizen process. And also too, just to show you in case maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, wow, this is a lot of work. I don't want to do all this work, but you're interested in tracing your family from Italy. I'll show you how to do that too. So it's a little bit of something for everybody, as long as you have an, uh, Italian ancestors, I think you'll find this interesting. Um, so the first part of the program, we're going to really focus on, thanks Samantha, um, we're going to really focus on the whole Italian citizen process, uh, the steps to take in that, and then we'll focus more on the second half about looking for your Italian ancestors in Italian records. Um, so this program's for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you put it in chat and I'm ignoring you, it's just, I'm not ignoring you, I just can't see it. So just break through and just say, hey, Sarah, I have a question, whatever. Um, and we'll get to that. So just a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about. We'll talk about who can become a citizen, um, who can't become a citizen, um, how to make an appointment with the consulate general, finding, out when your ancestor naturalized and how to obtain those documents, those naturalization records. Um, we'll talk about how to identify your ancestor's town of origin over in Italy, because unfortunately, we, one thing that we do take for granted in this country is that if we know that maybe somebody was born in Pennsylvania or somebody was born in New York, it's rather easy to get those records without knowing the actual town. Uh, in Italy, like a lot of European countries, you really need to know the specific town that your ancestors are from because those records are kept on the village level. Um, so one town is not gonna have the records of the other town. So you really gotta focus in on that. So we'll talk about too, where you might be able to find some of those documents um, that are gonna give a little insight to where exactly your family's from. Um, I'll show you how to use the Italian archive site, how to request the vital records from Italy once you actually find the town you're, or the commune that your family is from. Um, then we'll also talk about the records that you're going to need in America, the different vital records, how to get the long form of the vital records. We'll talk about an apostille, what the heck is an apostille, uh, how to get one and why that's important. We'll talk about where to go for translating your American documents um, to uh, your American documents, your English documents to Italian, not the other way around, and some of the forms, the fees, and also some helpful sites. So we got a lot to unpack. Um, this is getting recorded. I'm going, if you have registered with the library, I will send you this presentation. So you can kind of just sit back and you can take notes, but uh, you'll also get a copy of this. And you can also go, I think the library has a YouTube channel where you can go and look at this presentation later on if you forget what I'm talking about. So with that, here is a little handy chart that I took off of the Dual Italian American Citizen uh, Facebook group, which is a fantastic uh, Facebook group. Again, that's the Dual Italian American um, group. And if you are not a member of them, I strongly suggest doing it. They send out a great bunch of posts, lots of units to help people with. But anyway, one of the things that we want to start with is, do you have an Italian ancestor? Um, it's kind of a silly thing, but you pretty much really need to have an Italian ancestor to start this process. And some of the big questions is, did your <clears throat> Italian ancestor naturalize or die before March 17, 1861? Now you can go through this whole uh, chart, you can look at this, but for the time that we have here, the big question that we want to establish, or we wanna know the answer to, is did our ancestor um, become 
a American citizen, if they became an American citizen, did they become an American citizen after or before the next in line was born? So um, I'll just talk about myself for a second. So I, you can get it up to your great grandparents, um, which is actually pretty cool because in, if you were going for Irish dual citizen, it's up to your grandparents. Um, so anyway, a little bit of a family history for myself. And I'm just looking at this. Oh, hold on a second. I just got a note saying that they're not seeing, I guess you're not seeing, are you seeing this full, full screen of my uh, presentation? Hold it's showing up in like presentation mode. So uh, it, oh, it's okay. a little smaller. Okay. Um, let me just make sure that's Hold on a second. Okay. Sorry. Is that better? I don't know if that changed anything, but hopefully you could see it better. Uh, no change. No change. Okay. But you could see it okay? Yeah, you can zoom in. You can uh, pinch the zoom if you're on mobile. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, just a little bit about my process, my background. Uh, so my name is Sarah. My father, his name is Bob. Um, his father is Charlie, my grandpa Charlie. He's 91 years old. Um, and then my great-grandfather, who's the Italian ancestor, uh, his name was originally Carlo Gadotti, and then it became Charles Gadotti, Charles Gadotti Sr., so Charles Gadotti Sr. became an American citizen after my grandfather was born. So in this case, you're really hoping that your ancestor was a procrastinator and they didn't naturalize until after uh, your, your direct line was already born. So you may get the case where maybe you're dealing with a great grandparent and they had one child and then after that child, they became an American citizen, and then, then he had another child. Um, that second child would not be able, their descendants would not be able uh, to apply for citizenship, but the descendants of that first child would. So the big thing is we really want to figure out if our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if our ancestors had naturalized after the birth of their child, um, who you're the descendant of. Um, and this is just a little background again about who can apply. Um, now, one of the questions is that you might see here is the applicant and their parents must have never renounced their Italian citizenship. Um, renouncing your Italian citizenship does not mean becoming an American um, citizen. When I was talking to the gentleman at the Italian consul, I said, you know, what does that mean? He said, pretty much that doesn't really happen to people. Um, that would have been, they had to go to an Italian authority and said, I do not want to be an Italian citizen anymore. And that very rarely ever happened. Um, it did happen, but very rarely. So when they became an American citizen, they did not go and renounce their Italian citizenship. Um, so usually you can kind of, put that on the back burner. You don't really need to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> again, this kind of just gives a little bit of outline about uh, being born after the next generation naturalized. Um, one of the things that's important to remember or to think about is if you have um, maybe two Italian great grandparents, okay, you want to go through the paternal line. The paternal line is the easiest line to go through um, because prior to 1948, women did not pass their citizenship on to their children. Um, you can get it that way, but you have to go through a court order to get it. And that's very confusing. It's costs a lot of money. Um, but if you have the opportunity to go through the male line, do that because it's smooth sailing or smoother sailing, I should say. Does anybody have any questions so far? Now also too about if when you get citizenship. Um, so 
for example, I have my Italian citizenship. My uh, two kids who are five and six, they have Italian citizenship. And my husband wanted Italian citizenship, but he can't have it because he does not want to learn Italian and he doesn't want to take a, a, a naturalization test in Italian. And I don't blame him. It's not like we really travel around um, over in Europe. It's just kind of a fun thing for me to have and for my kids to have. So there's a whole different process for people who want their spouses to gain Italian citizenship. Um, we're not going to talk about that in this presentation, but know that if you get your citizenship and you have children under 18, they will automatically get citizenship as well. So that's kind of fun if you have uh, young kids. So oh, let me just look at the chat here. I see something. Um, just looking here at the chat. So Anne said, my grandfather was naturalized after my mother and was born, uh, but before 1922, was born, but before 1922. So my grandfather renounced his Italian citizenship. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, he, did, he didn't renounce his Italian citizenship. He just became an American citizen. He did not renounce unless he specifically went there. Um, he wouldn't have done that. Okay, uh, Matthew asks, is there a generation limit? Yes, you can up to the great grandparents. You can't go after that. Um, so let's pop back over to here. Okay, so one of the first things to do is you want to make your appointment with the consulate. And I say that it's one of the first things that you want to do is because it takes a really super duper long time um, to get your appointment normally. Um, if you are working on the West Coast with California, it's about an eight year time limit, um, sorry, uh, wait time. So that's a very long time. Um, in New York, prior to the pandemic, it was a two year wait time. Um, as of right now, for the past year, New York has not been taking any new appointments. So I'm not quite sure what it's gonna look like when the system opens up again. But um, if you are contemplating becoming an Italian citizen, if you're thinking, okay, this is something I want to look into, I totally advise you to make your appointment as soon as possible. Um, so the first things that we want to do is you want to go to this website and it's Prenota, okay? And we're going to click on this. And the first thing we're going to do is, and I'll show you the screenshots of this, but we'll talk about it. We're going to find our consulate general. Uh, we're going to create a login. We're going to make a reservation for citizenship. And one thing that's super important to remember is that dates are in the European format. So it's <clears throat> date, month, year. Um, Italy is not going to be sending you reminder emails. They really don't care if you show up or not. Um, so you really need to mark this on your calendar. Um, and just remember date, month, year, because you don't want to go to the wrong appointments that you've been waiting for such a long period of time. Um, and new dates, which I'll talk about later, are released at midnight in Rome time. Um, so you were going to want to set an alarm. So first thing we'll do is you go to this website, Prenota Online, and the address is right here. And at the end, I'll show you a, uh, I'll give you a list of all the different websites that I'll have you go to. So the first thing you want to do is go to Prenota Online. Um, and you're going to want to go to the second one here for booking your services and finding your embassy. You want to find your consulate general um, for your area. And I'm just looking at this. Um, I'm just looking at Athena had said in the chat, she wanted to know, so adult children cannot get citizenship, only younger children eight, uh, under 18 uh, will automatically get it. The kids, the, um, the other people would have to apply on their own. Um, and Tammy, I would just, Tammy said that she entered her birthday in the US format on Prenota. She said, should I change it or let the consulate know at my appointment? You could just let them know at the appointment. Okay, um, back to this. So anyway, you go click here at the embassy consulates. You wanna to go to the consulate general 
and for your particular region. So in this case, because I live in New York, I would click on the Consulate General uh, for New York. Now, each one of these has its own particular login. So you can't say, all right, I can't get an appointment in New York. I want to see if Philadelphia will let me in. You have to go to your specific area um, where your jurisdiction is. So you click on the Consulate General for New York, and it's going to take you to their particular page. And pretty much it just says, welcome, welcome to our website. We're glad you're here. Um, for a new user, you want to create your new user registration. That's the first step that we're going to do here. So we'll click on our create new user registration. And we're going to fill this out. Um, <clears throat> You can use your driver's license for your ID document. You can use a passport, whatever. You'll fill this out. You'll create a login. I'm sure you're all familiar with how to do that, set up a password and whatever. Then you're going to go back to the screen, and then you're going to click on login for registered user. And this is what you would do when you're making an appointment um, or whatever. You would just click on the registered user. And you get to this site here and it says, book your visit. Now, I'm gonna go back to this link here in a minute, but for all intents and purposes with this one, what we're gonna do is we're going to make our reservation. So as I mentioned before, the new dates are released at midnight on Rome time. So what I do is, is I would set an alarm on my phone for 5.55, uh, Eastern Standard Time, um, because it would be at six o'clock in New York time. Uh, so I'd set an alarm for 5.55 and I would get ready to hop onto this website. And if you ever have bought tickets on Ticketmaster, I kind of related to that. Um, and you want to wait right till the time that the clock is going to change and then hit the button to see if you can get it. So you want to make your reservation. And you're going to go to now normally in this pre or post pandemic world, this citizenship button would be highlighted in blue, just like a passport visa study. Um, that's what you wanted to click right at whatever time room time is for you um, to make that appointment. So if you were to click this button, it should normally bring you to a little calendar that's like this. And you'll notice here that nothing is currently highlighted because no dates have been released. Um, if, if something was available, the date would be highlighted in green. And usually there's only about three or four spots available a day and they go really fast. So it usually takes me about a month or so to get a, um, a booking for a client. Um, so just try back every day, don't get frustrated with it. Just kind of make it your part of your daily routine of once these websites actually go live that they're taking appointments for you to go on there and make your appointment. So that's how you would make your appointment. Um, now, some of the other things that you would need is going back to over here, as I mentioned before, about information about citizenship. You would click on this button right here it says click here for further information on citizenship. And it's going to bring you to the consulate general page for your particular area. And they're gonna give you some information here and this has been changing a lot with COVID. But the thing that's really important that you're going to need for your appointment, and you can do this when you're getting closer to the actual date, um, you could click on forms and you click on forms here and it's going to bring you to this spot right here. And you're going to need all these different forms to fill out. Um, this is your checklist. That's really important about what you're going to need um, for the whole process, your application, and all these other forms here. You're going to need those notarized and fill it out. So that's something that you're going to need for your appointment. Don't worry about that just yet, but I wanted to show you so you know where that is on your website. So. Um, let me just go to here. Okay, so Nicholas had said, uh, what are the last five characters of the ID document for a driver's license? Um, that would just be on your personal driver's license. You would just look 
for your ID and you would just look um, there, I guess. Okay, uh, so big question. How do I know when my ancestor naturalized? That's the big question that's on everybody in mind. This is what's gonna make or break you forget your Italian citizenship. So one of the first places that we're going to start is the US Census. Um, the US Census, if you're totally new to the world of genealogy and that has nothing to do with the study of gems, that's the study of your ancestors. That's what I do all day long. Uh, a census record is one of the best places to look for that. And you can go find census records on the alwaysfreefamilysearch.org, familysearch.org. You, I'm sure, have heard of the website Ancestry, right? Um, Ancestry is run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and their free version, which is actually better, is Family Search, and that's totally free. You can go on Family Search. You can look for these records um, this way. So anyway, what you would do is you would go into Family Search, <clears throat> you would write um, census time period. You can look that up, or you can put your ancestor in a search button, and this is a census, okay? Um, this here is the 1900 census. And when you get to be really dorky like myself, you get a favorite census year and mine is 1900. Uh, they take the census every 10 years, just so you know. And in the 1900 census, there's a line here. You're going to see over here, it's gonna ask about citizenship. And with citizenship, it says naturalize, naturalized, okay? Now with different years, it's going to uh, be in some different spots, but you'll see naturalization. Um, over here, you'll see it says AL. Anybody want to know, anybody know what AL stands for? Feel free to, alien. what's that? Alien? Yeah, an alien, perfect, thank you. Um, it stands for an alien. So here, Lorenzo Forgetti, this is my guy right here. Lorenzo Forgetti is an alien. Um, so if you'll notice here, Lorenzo has his wife, Nunzia, who's later Nancy, Vincenzo and Carmela, okay? And again, he is an alien. And we'll go back to Lorenzo later. Lorenzo <clears throat> in the 1910 census is going, you're going to see um, N.A under the naturalization uh, column. Anybody want to take a guess what NA would stand for? Naturalized. Yeah, naturalized. So if you see NA, you know that that person is a naturalized citizen. Um, also, if you see PA, what would PA stand for? If you see PA. Isn't that one like pending acceptance or something? papers, their first papers oh. were submitted. So they're in the process of getting it. Um, now, Lorenzo is going to end up having 10 kids. In the 1910 census, he's going to be seen as naturalized. So any kids that he had, these kids would be able, their descendants would be able to become naturalized citizens, I'm sorry, Italian citizens. But the kids who he has later on, um, their descendants are not able to apply for citizenship. So what we're doing here is I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, um, comparing this time period, I know that I can look between 1900 and 1910 because the other census record said he's a naturalized citizen. That that's my time period of when this guy was naturalized. Um, now, I want to also take a note of where this person lives because this is going to be very important. In this case, he's living in New York City. He's living in Manhattan. Um, so we're going to keep that in mind. Let me see here. Okay. So when we're looking for naturalizations, this is very super important. Um, prior, I'm sorry, after 1906, if somebody became an American citizen after 1906, which is what we're hoping for, because it's easier, there is a central database for that. Um, and you can find these naturalization records. You can find copies of them on Family Search, usually that free website I talked about. Sometimes they have on Ancestry. 
Um, and again, that's a centralized database. You don't need to know the specific court where that person was naturalized. Prior to 1906, it was up to the individual um, county to keep those records. So if, for example, this guy here, so here's Lorenzo Fragetti. This is his uh, naturalization papers. This is through New York City. Um, and he is naturalizing in 1900. I had to know that he was naturalizing in New York City in the Eastern District, and I could look for this information here. Um, now, if he was in Yonkers, New York, which is where my other family was from, I would have to reach out to the Yonkers Courthouse or the Westchester Archives, the Westchester County Archives, and say, hey, do you have naturalization records for this individual? Um, so you need to know where that person lived um, to get those records. Now, if your ancestor moved, so say, for example, maybe they live in New Jersey, they start the process there, and then they move to New York City, they're going to have to restart that process all over again. Um, so you're going to need to get those, um, those naturalization records. So that's, again, where I said where you want to make sure where you're keeping in mind where your ancestor is coming from note the town, note the county, and then contact the courthouse prior to 1906 and ask them, where are these naturalization records? Um, so I'm just looking at the chat again. I hope I'm not confusing to people. Okay, let's see. Are all records after 1906 in a database and are they accessible? Great question. That's what I was just about to ask you, or just about to mention. My grandfather was born in Italy and my great grandpa moved to America with himself when he was four years old. Uh, he who was the first born who naturalized my concern away. Um, so I have a question here. My grandfather was born in Italy and my great grandparents moved to America with him when he was four years old. He who was their first born, whose naturalization am I concerned with? So you are concerned with your grandfather, not your great grandparents. Um, you just want your grandpa. Um, you want the one that's closest to you. Okay, so after 1906, first of all, I wanna show you a difference about what the, the naturalization records look like. So this one's from 1900, okay? Um, you're not getting very much detail as far as where this individual is coming from. It's just saying they're from Italy. It doesn't give you a specific town, which is pretty disappointing. Um, gives you a <clears throat> date of arrival. You could then go look at ship passenger records. They have this on Family Search. They have this on Ancestry. Sometimes ship passenger records give you um, the towns that people are from. But again, these early records usually don't. They kind of just give you a general uh, country. So after 1906, though, we start getting a lot of great information. So this is my great grandfather. This is the guy who I got my citizenship through. This is from 1932. And if you look here, so it gives you information about him. So we have Charles Gadotti. Um, that's his American name. And I know that because his Italian name, he said, I lawfully entered the United States under the name of Carlo Gadotti. That's very important for the consulate. They are going to want to know the original name of your ancestor and hopefully some documentation also um, that's going to link those two together. So usually that naturalization record does ask, what name did you come under? Uh, what have you changed it to? Okay, um, gives you the name of his ship and in Fiano, Italy. Over here, again, it says Fiano, Italy. This, oh, by the way, the first paper that your ancestor is going to submit is the Declaration of Intention. That's them saying, I wanna become an American citizen. Several years later, they're going to be able to do their petition for net for citizenship. Um, you are going to need both sets of these documentations. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then you can see here too, how much more advanced it's become. They have like a nice picture of the person. So that's nice. So anyway, if you um, want to get these 
documents and you don't want to go through the hassle of contacting the local court, you can go to this website. Okay, it's the US Citizen and Immigration Service website right here. And again, I will send you this information too, so you don't have to go crazy writing it. When you get to this website, it's going to give you this chart right here. And the first question is, do you have a file number? And in most cases, I doubt that you do have a file number. Um, and even too, if you do have an index number, I recommend people to just do the whole <clears throat> search for the file because you don't want to go through the whole process and realize the document's missing. So what you would do is, do you have a file record? No. Click on no. Um, and then you're going to ask them to do an index search for you. That's going to cost you as of right now, $60. Okay. Um, and then it's going to take three to six months for them to get back to you. And they're either going to say, yes, we have an index search result for this person or no, we don't. If they have the records, if they have the index, you go back to this website. Okay. And then you say, yes, you have the file number because that first request is going to give you the file number. You can then fill this out. You pay them another $60 and then you wait another three to six months um, for them to give you this naturalization record. So plan on a year to get this if you're not going through the um, actual county. If you know the actual county, you can contact them, ask them, how do I get a naturalization record for this person during this time period? And it will take you about two weeks and about $10. So you just saved about a year of your life, six months, a year of your life, and also about $110. So by knowing the actual place is always going to save you a lot more money. Um, okay, so again, this is just the whole thing. Order the index search. Um, in order to order an index search, you cannot just say, I want the index of Charles Gadotti. You're going to need to know specifics about this individual. Even if you think they don't have a very common name, you want to get as much information as possible. Um, so you're going to need that person's address in America as best as possible. You would get that again on the census record. Um, an estimate of when they were born, um, where they were born. Even if you want to put Italy, know their household members. Um, who are their children? Who are their siblings? Who that were over here in America with them? Who is their spouse? In a year of immigration, all this stuff is going to help them um, find your ancestor because you don't want them after, you know, you just waited six months. You don't want them to just send you somebody who is not related to you and you just wasted all this money. So uh, provide them with as much information as you possibly can to get the best results. So did your immigrant naturalize after their child was born? If the answer was yes, then start gathering vital records. If the answer was no, see if there's another ancestor who you possibly could go under. Um, or, you know, just if you're like, okay, I'm done with this process. This is a very long process. Um, you can just maybe do some genealogical research and do some research on your family in Italy and look at the documents that way, which I'll show you how to do. So anyway, say that your ancestor did naturalize um, after the next in line was born. What we're gonna need to start doing is start gathering our vital records. Our vital records is birth, marriage, and death, uh, and divorce. Now, if you go to the forms that I had talked about before on the consulate general, they will give you the checklist for this, but this is kind of an overview of the things that you're going to need. So first things you're gonna need is to know your inline relatives. So for me, my inline relatives was my dad, my grandpa, Charlie, and my great grandfather, Charles. Um, my out of line relatives would be my mom, my grandma, and my great grandma, okay? So for my inline relatives, I need to get their birth certificate. I need the, uh, <clears throat> I need the extended or long form certified copy. Um, now in Italy, I'm going to need to get it from the commune that they came from. Um, 
with the name of the parents on there. And we'll talk about how to find that family's village of origin with the, oh, I'm sorry, let me just, in case I'm confusing people. I'm talking here about getting the records from the Italian archives. So in my family's case, that is my great grandfather. This is me getting my great grandfather's um, records. So I needed his birth certificate. Um, I did not need his marriage certificate because my great grandfather got married over in America. Um, and I don't need his death certificate because again, he was living in America. Now in a case where you might need a person's death certificate is maybe you're going to your great grandfather. Your great grandfather gets married in Italy, uh, has a child um, that you're a descendant from and his wife passes away. Um, you're going to need the spouse's death certificate from Italy um, and the marriage certificate as well. So how the heck are you gonna get that? So first thing we wanna do is we wanna find uh, the village of origin. Now, a couple of different places you can look to find your ancestors. Village of origin is, I guess most obviously check their naturalization record after we've been doing this. Look at a ship manifest record. Um, one of the secret squirrel places that people have um, their town of origin on is their World War I and World War II draft records. Um, it's actually one of the best places that you would find that somebody would have their town of origin on. Keep in mind that your ancestors may not have been spelling things correctly. So think about it being phonetically spelled. Check a different ways if you're not seeing them one way. Uh, check them out a different way. Also vital records, um, check to see if they had children in America, what are, what's the town of origin that they're putting in their children's birth record. Um, again, if they were married in America, if they died in America, what is, is there a town that's being associated with them? Do they have an obituary? Does the obituary name the town? And also too, you would wanna check your <clears throat> ancestors fan club. Uh, their friends, associates, their neighbors. I do a whole other presentation about finding your uh, immigrant ancestors. Um, so uh, if, I can let you know too when those, those are um, for some information. I'm looking here, uh, just some quick questions. Um, so my great grandfather naturalized in 1927. My grandfather was born in 1920, I'm oh, sorry, naturalized in 1925. Um, my grandfather was born in 1920. Does that, 1927, does that mean I am not eligible? Uh, if they took their oath of allegiance and that's when they became naturalized, that's when they become naturalized, then unfortunately that would, from that line, uh, would make you uneligible because that person would have naturalized before that. Um, looking here is Pat had said, so about the spelling of names or places, is this a problem if it's inconsistent? It's not a problem if it's inconsistent, it's a problem if you can't find it. Um, so that's why I'm telling you to look for the different places. They'll, they'll understand if our ancestors didn't spell things right. I don't spell things correctly, um, but if you can find the records, that's what's important. Okay, so this here is the Italian archive site. This is where, in case you just got frustrated or even too, if you don't wanna go through the process, if you wanna do some Italian research, this is where you're gonna start. Whenever dealing with a website from another country, I always open it in Google Chrome because it's gonna give you the opportunity to translate that page. By the way, I don't speak Italian. Um, I don't read Italian, but after doing this for so long, I can pretty much read a vital record because it's that same format over and over again. And you can too, you'll train yourself um, to be able to pick out those key words, those key dates and be able to get information from it. So if you're thinking to yourself, I don't know how to read Italian. I don't know how to speak Italian. It's okay, you can learn. Um, Um, there is no, the question is, do you need any language proficiency? Absolutely not. Um, you're totally fine with the marriage process for citizenship. That is, 
but you don't need to know, you don't need to read, you don't need to write anything in Italian. So don't worry about that. Or else I would not be here today. Um, you're welcome. Okay, so anyway, this is Antonazzi. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll give you the, <clears throat> the, the exact website at the end of this. Here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to browse the registry. So we'd click on this button here, browse the registry. And this is if you know the town where your family is from. You're gonna need to, again, you're gonna need to know the town. Don't, there, let me show you this for a second. You're gonna see here, find the registry, find the names. Just forget those buttons even existed. They're awful. They don't have the information that you want on there. They haven't gotten into it yet. You wanna to go to browse the registry. So browse the registry. Um, you wanna know the state that your family is from in Italy. In my situation, it is Salerno. So I would go over to, actually, I don't even have it on, this is a screenshot. Um, I would scroll down, get to Salerno. And it's going to bring me to the state archives of Salerno. Now, there are three different time periods of record collections in Italy. The first one starts about 18, 06, and that would be the Napoleonic civil states. If there's one thing that came out of uh, Napoleon taking over different parts of Europe, it was that he installed um, civil records being done. So I do like it, Napoleon for that. Plus I also like the Italian dessert too, named after him. So that's two good things he had going for him. Um, so anyway, I would click on whatever time period, and you can kind of play around with this, see what time period works for you. In my situation, it was the uh, marital status time period. So I would click on that. And I'm going to go to the town that I need. And the town that I need is Montecorvo Pugliano. I would click on Montecorvo Pugliano. And I would click on, this is if, me, if I was finding my great grandfather's um, birth record, okay? I would click on born, also known as Nati, N-A-T-I. I have this in the English format here, not the Italian one. And I would go to the year. I would scroll down here to 1907. And then this is where it gets intimidating. <laughs> if you see over here, it is a page by a page um, film from microfilm. And what you're going to have to do is you look here and it says, okay, there is over 207 images. Okay, don't freak out. Promise me you're not gonna freak out. The end of these books, if you look here, okay, this format, you can see here, it's kind of the same like paragraphy format. When you start getting to the end, the last few pages are in a different format. These are the indexes. So what you can do is you would click on the index, click on the index, where to go. Okay, this is an index at the back of a book and you can go, and sometimes they're by first names, sometimes they're by last names, sometimes they're by dates. So in this situation, I'm scrolling down here and I'm looking for Gadotti, G-U-I-D-O-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Um, I would find the page, here he is, Carlo Gadotti, my ancestor. And he is either, he is entry number 210, okay? So now I would go back here and I would then figure out what the entry 210 was. I would look through here. And eventually I would come to this entry right here, okay? This is his actual birth record. Um, now it says entry 210. And this basically, this whole beginning part for all these Italian uh, records is, says that I am an official of the town. Um, usually it's the father presented this child to me at this time on this date. Um, so in this situation that this person, his name, the baby was Carlo. Um, he was born in Fiano. Um, that his parents were also were Raphael and uh, Anna Acuso, the Mogli, that's the wife, Moglia. Um, so knowing this, I know that the town has a copy of this record. So I can reach out to this town and request the record. Um, 
And by the way, this is this record here is has a lot more detail um, than what the town's going to send you back. The town is just going to send you just a few lines of a transcript. Um, I think it's really cool to see these actual records. Um, but anyway, so now what you have to do is figure out how to get in touch with the town. So contacting the commune. Now, if you go to Google and you want to put in the town of Montecorgo Pugliano. This is the town that I'm working with here. If I put in the town of Montecorgo Pugliano, nothing's really coming up because they don't use the word town. They use commune. So you could put commune, whatever area you're looking for. And a lot of times you will get the official um, website page of there and you can contact their email. The other thing that you can do is going to this website, um, the Commune Italian. It is a what's known as a gazetteer. Um, and that kind of gives you all the different information about the individual towns and contact information for them. So a couple of things that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find the commune's email address. You're going to want their fax number and you're gonna want their regular snail mail um, address because they're kind of awful at getting back to Americans. Um, now, when you write a letter to Italy, write it in Italian. Um, they will not usually answer you. If you're writing it in English, you need to write it in Italian. If you don't know how to write something in Italian, um, you can go on to Google Translate. Uh, you can do it that way. You can also go on to this website, Fiverr, which I'll give you the information for and ask somebody to translate it for you. So anyway, also, too, when you're requesting a letter in Italian, you have to include your ID. So if you do not include your driver's license, your passport, you are not getting a response. Um, so that's very important. They also have form letters in the Consulate General website that you can download also. This website here, um, the Commune Italiani, <clears throat> and again, if anybody's listening to this and they are fluent in Italian, I am butchering the language and I apologize for that. Um, so anyway, you would go to the Providence that you need. And in my case, it's Salerno. Go to hit Salerno. Um, I would then scroll down to the town and I get the information on the town of Montecorgo Pugliano. Over here, if I look here, I get the official site. It's like a little Christmas wreath kind of with a star in it. That's the official site website. They also have the email um, for the commune. I would email this, but also too, this is very important. So listen up. If their email address ends in PEC, um, that is what is known as their certified email address. And for them to get back to you, you also need to have a PEC email. Um, it's a little complicated how to do that. I have one of them. They don't even get back to me that much. Um, but look for their regular, maybe a Google, uh, Gmail, whatever. Look for a regular email. Do not write to their PEC email. You will not get a response, okay? Um, their official website, you can click on that um, <clears throat> and also look for that way for their regular address. Um, you can also go on there for their email address, their fax numbers, whatever, kind of explore there. Okay, I'm just looking to see here. Okay, I have papers from a commune that was then absorbed by a new commune. Is that going to be a problem? If you have the official papers, that will not be a problem. Um, now, one of the things that I have, if you had remembered, which I don't expect you to, in the naturalization form, it said that my um, ancestor was from Fiano. Fiano is too small of an area. Um, so their records were kept in Montecorgo Pugliano. So I had to get the records that way. It does say in the Montecorgo Pugliano records that he was born in Fiano. Um, so that, that's okay for your question that you're saying. Apply for Italian citizen. Pamela asked, I found on a census that states my grandfather came to America in 1913, naturalized in 1918. Can I apply for Italian citizenship? That all depends if he naturalized again after um, your descendant, so your father or your mother, whatever line that was from, um, was born. Okay. 
back over here. So once you write away to Italy, once you kind of stalk them a little bit um, to get your documents, they will send you back this form. It's kind of boring looking. Um, and there's a little stamp that you're like, I could have made this, um, but this is what they'll give you. And this is what you're going to present to the consulate general. Okay. So for people, oops, vital records, you know, what you'll also need to do is get the vital records um, from the non-Italian authorities. So those are our American records. We're going to need those also. So for our inline relatives, um, again, that for me, that was my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, myself. Um, you're going to want to order brand new documents because the consulate is going to take your documents and you will never ever see them again. So don't give them anything that you have some type of emotional attachment to or your real ones. Um, you need copies of them. So when you get the copies, um, you're, or when you're uh, requesting them, you want to specifically state that you want the long form. Um, you were going to need the long form of birth, marriage, and death records. Uh, for the out of line records, you're going to need the spouse's birth certificate and you just need a photocopy of that. Um, okay, I just found a census. Okay, I'm just looking at Pamela here. So she said the grandfather came to America in 1913, naturalized in 1918. Um, she wasn't born until 1924. Unfortunately, that would cut the line then and they wouldn't be able to get through that line um, that way. I'm really sorry. I feel like I'm letting people down when I tell them they can't, they're not eligible. Um, but hopefully you could do some Italian research too. Uh, so anyway, we're going to need the birth, marriage, death. And if you're thinking, how the heck am I gonna get that? I'll tell you in a minute too. So, um, if you will also need divorce papers for people. Um, this is now, for example, my cousin, um, she just went for her Italian citizenship. Her father has been married four times. She was the child of the first marriage. Um, for her own sanity, <laughs> she did not have to provide all the divorce records for my uncle and the death records of his spouse. She only had to do the divorce record for my uncle and his uh, first wife. So if it's one divorce, get that. If it's multiple divorces with subsequent uh, spouses after you, you don't have to get them, um, the divorce records. And you could just do a, so say for example, to my husband, he was divorced. Um, he is not going for his Italian citizenship. He's not Italian. Uh, I had to give a copy of his divorce record um, from his first wife, just a copy. I did not have to get it all signed all over again. Okay, so now once you get, let's go back to these records for a second. So, for me, what I had to do is I had to reach out to Yonkers, Yonkers, New York, get my father's birth record, my grandparents' birth record. I was very lucky. A lot of, they were all born in Yonkers. They were all married in Yonkers, very easy. So I reached out to Yonkers, the town. I got the long form, okay? Then what I had to do was um, get an apostille. Now an apostille looks like this, okay? It's this little stamp right here. It's going to be different for each state. Now, this is a little bit different based on what state you're in. I'm speaking specifically to New York. Um, so what I had to do was I had to get <clears throat> the, do the uh, document from the town, send the document from the town to the county. Okay, so I had to go from Yonkers, which is a town in New York. I had to go to Westchester County um, and tell them I need to have this stamped for an apostille. They sent me the documents back from Westchester. I had to then send them out to New York to get this stamp on it saying that it is certified that this is um, a legitimate copy. This can be used internationally, this document now. Um, 
Now, again, this could be different based on where you live. I know there are people coming from all different states, so you have to specifically Google um, apostille in whatever state that your ancestors were from. Okay, so it's to the ancestors were from, it's not where you live. So if they live in New York, you're gonna to need to get the New York apostille. If they live from Texas, you gotta go that route. Um, but if you do not have an apostille, they will not accept your documents um, for the direct line. They will send you back and they'll give you homework. So if you can avoid that, just get everything with an apostille on it for the direct line. Now, tips on saving money. This can get very expensive very quickly. Um, I have talked to people who have spent thousands and thousands of dollars on that. That to me is crazy town. Um, now, you can also do this yourself. It is extremely doable to do it yourself. I know it might be throwing a lot of information on you. In order to save the most money, what you wanna do is really narrow down the exact town that an event took place in, birth, marriage, death, whatever. For example, my great grandpa, the guy who I went through citizenship, he dropped dead in a bowling alley. Um, he was doing a speech, he was accepting an award. He said, I don't wanna make a speech, I'm scared. And he showed them he dropped dead. Now I had to find out where his death actually took place. Cause I wasn't sure if it was in the bowling alley, the ambulance ride, or if it was in the hospital uh, where they pronounced him dead. So I had to reach out to all different towns and say, do you have this death record? And I got it. Um, that cost about $10. Okay. For the actual record cost me $10 took about two weeks to get back. I then sent that record to the County to get the stamp for the apostille that cost me $7. So that was $17 and I'm not good at math, but I can do this. So $17. I sent it to New York state to get the stamp on it. That's $10. Okay. So now we're at $27. So for me, it cost me, because I knew where these people were from, cost me $27 per document. If you go to, there's this website, Vital Check. Okay, and Vital Check is very good if you do not know where your family's from um, in America or if you just don't have the time. Okay, Vital Check um, pretty much checks all the area in that particular state. Um, and it's going to cost you because it will allow you to do the uh, document fee. So say, do you want to have this apostilled? So you would order your document, you can click the button to have it apostilled. Um, usually about in New York, that's going to cost you from 60 to $90 per document. That's a lot, I think. Um, now, if you were going maybe the more expensive route, that's $90 per document. You're going to need about two to three documents usually for each line. So that's a lot of money. Um, whereas if you went know the exact town and you reached out to them, it's about a third of the price. So by knowing, you know, take a little extra time, it's gonna take you a while to get your appointment anyway, you might as well save some money and do it that way. Um, excuse me, I don't think you need like, you know, you don't have to get these, unless you have an extreme case, you don't have to get lawyers or anything like that. You can, you can completely do this yourself. Um, also too, as I mentioned before, there's that website, Dual Italian American Citizen Group on Facebook. They are tremendous. There's a lot of really helpful people on there. Um, and they, they'll definitely steer you in the right direction. Um, now, if this is tricky, if the person is still alive, that person must request their own documents. So I cannot request my father's, I cannot request my 91 year old grandfather's documents. They had to do that themselves. Um, it can only be sent to them. Okay, so they need to be aware that you're doing this process and they have to be on board with this. They are also gonna have to be on board with this because one of the forms that they're going to fill out is a um, kind of like an accept acceptance thing saying they know you're doing this, they're okay with this and they never became, they never renounced their Italian citizenship themselves. Um, so you're going to have to reach out to your, the older generation and just let them know, hey, I'm doing this. Can you sign off on this? Can you order these documents? And a lot of times too, I think uh, uh, people are interested in it. And since you're already ordering their documents, if they wanna get their own appointment, it makes it a lot easier for them too, to do it. Um, now, one thing that's also very important to know 
is that say you have a family member in New York who went through this process and they submitted all their documentation. Um, for example, my brother, he's having his appointment in November. Um, right now they're mailing the packets in, all this packet as opposed to meeting in person. Um, but either way, he has his appointment. I have all my forms. He just has to reference my forms, submit his own birth certificate, submit his birth, um, his first marriage. He has to submit his divorce papers and his new marriage certificate and the birth certificate of his kid. Um, and he could get it that way. Now, my cousin, who just went a few months ago in Philadelphia, who's under my grandfather, um, she had to get all new documents for my grandfather and also for my great grandfather. She had to do the whole process all over again because she's in a different consulate. Sometimes some of these consulates talk to one another. They uh, say, okay, we will accept these documents for people who already got it. Some consulates don't. Philadelphia is one of the ones that does not um, communicate with the other, um, doesn't communicate with New York. So she had to go and get all her own documents. So if you have somebody in your family who's already going through this process, um, just be aware of the Consulate General's policy with intercommunication. So this is, again, this is the stuff to order your driver, um, order your documents for America. Um, you can go directly through the state, vital check. Whenever requesting documents, whether it's in Italy, whether it's in America, you usually need to send your ID a copy of that. Um, sometimes you also may need to show proof of descendancy for yourself. Um, so say you're requesting your grandfather's death certificate, okay? You may need to, based on the time lapse period, uh, request, <clears throat> you might need to show the birth certificate of your father um, and the birth certificate of yourself to show that you're a descendant of them based on the state regulations. Okay, so um, getting your documents translated from English to Italian. This is another very important step. So you're going to get all your documents, you're going to get them to have the apostille, and then you have to get your American documents translated into Italian. Um, do not, repeat after me, do not use Google Translate for this. They will say this is completely unacceptable and all your hard work, you know, has gone away. So much. Um, one of the websites I recommend is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R. and the idea is that they um, will do anything or they'll do things for five to ten dollars. And for, for the last few years, I've been working with this vendor, the last fuel station. Excellent work. There's, I'm sure, there's a bunch of other people out there. Um, I send them my documents within a day. They send a legal translation back to me. Um, in Italian, and it usually costs about ten dollars. Okay, so that is one thing to look at. Okay, so the other documents that you will need, um, <clears throat> going back to that website here. To show you here. You go back to this website, you go to forms, you go to these ones, you're going to need to download um, and complete all these different forms here, form one, form two, form three. They're not hard. Um, you'll be able to do that. You just need to get them notarized. So you'll need those. Um, a copy of your current passport, your current American passport. Um, a copy of, if you're not American citizen, a green card, a visa. Um, you're also going to need a copy of two utility bills, a bank statement, um, and a money order. Right now, it's the equivalency of 300 euros. Um, and, but you have to be, you have to check on that right before you make your, uh, have your appointment, because uh, that could change. But as I said, right now, it's 300 euros. Um, so, I think for myself, the whole process cost about, um, I'm gonna say like $600 doing it myself with the fee, um, paying for documents uh, that. I would expect doing it yourself 
And again, this is a great using a great grandfather or great grandparent. Um, if, again, if you're doing it yourself, less than a thousand. Um, if you're not doing it yourself, I have no idea what other people charge, um, but it can get very costly. So anyway, just do it yourself. It's a lot easier. Uh, some of the other websites that are that I've talked about that are helpful um, to make your appointment is Prenota, uh, the forms and checklists, you can find them there, the Italian archive base, family search, document translating, um, the information about the towns in Italy, the addresses, uh, they're all there. So I think we're right at eight o'clock and I know I just threw a lot of information on you. Uh, let's see here. Just going to the chat. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now. Uh, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll try to get to as many as possible. Also too, if you're interested, um, I do also do it with this library and with some other ones. Um, I do free consultations. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything or whatever, but just to kind of help if you need some one-on-one -on -one help. Um, they're half hour long. And uh, just to kind of help you out with the process there. Okay. Sarah, I have a question um, just about genealogy in general. So, uh, before the call, I mentioned that I already have my application in, but um, for, uh, for my grandfather's line, or my great grandfather rather, um, his, as I'm doing research, my trail runs cold for my great grandmother. And I was curious, um, if you had any experience with requesting a stato di familia from a commune, and if so, how do you, how do you go about getting a response from the commune? So, are you trying to get trying to think here? So, so you, do you know the town where your grand, great grandma was from? Yeah. So basically, it, it, long story short, great, uh, great grandfather came over here, naturalized, went back to Italy, got married, had grandfather. Then he passes away. And after my grandfather comes to the US, we don't know where his mom went. So I'm trying to, uh, I, I've been told that I can it, uh, get a stato di familia and that's kind of like an Italian census, but um, I haven't found any templates online how to request that from them. I'll tell you, I have not had any experience with that. The one thing I would do for you is I would go into the Italian archives, the Morti, M-O-R-T-I, and yeah. look for death records for her. And you can print that out. Yeah, okay, thanks. That would be my best, easiest guess to go with that. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, let's see. Do, 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 um, What if grandparents never naturalized, only had green card, are you eligible? Yes. Um, you would want to submit a um, request form to that website that I had showed you before. This is for if you're looking for the naturalization search. Um, right here, okay order an index search if they come back and saying that there's no um, index or they might have just a green card, you would order that and you can bring that in and they will use that as the paper for the naturalization. Let me see here. I'm just gonna ask this. I'm wondering, can you find naturalization papers if you go to Salt Lake City to the archive? You don't even have to go that far. You can go right on to Family Search. Let me actually let's show. Let's take a trip there right now. Hold on a minute. Uh, I'm the only thing is, is that some of them, like my ancestors, went to Colorado. So mm -hmm. it's um, so where it is, the little county is difficult to find places mm -hmm. or to find the actual um, papers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if they exist in the um, archive in Salt Lake. So what you would do is you would go to let's see here. I'm just looking for my uh, website here. Okay. All right. So 
I'm not sharing yet. Let me go to, okay, so, nope. So what you would do is you would go to family search. Sign in, create a login. And it always goes a little bit slower. What you can do is go to records. Now you're saying Colorado, right? Yes, sorry. Colorado, no, that's okay. Ah, I hate when it goes back. So you wanna go search, you wanna go to records. And with family search, they're gonna give you this little map over here, okay? Um, I always like to click on the map to get the place that I'm looking for because it narrows down the records. Go away. Colorado. So if I'm looking at Colorado, the different collections that it would have here, I'm going to scroll down here, where this is filtered by collection. And I'm just seeing if they have an indexed naturalization record. And as of right now, they do not have um, a naturalization indexed. Mm -hmm. So what you would need is to... So what I know is that it happened some, sometime between 1920, <clears throat> excuse me, 25 and 30, from what I can tell in the census mm -hmm. documents. And, and I, have a, I have a number, I got a number from the courthouse of where they, they were um, supposedly naturalized. Um, so, you know, hmm, yeah. now you just, call, <laughs> you just call the courthouse or you yeah, no, they told me that I have to go to the National Archive. Um, who told you that? The person at the courthouse who I don't know knows anything. So no, a lot of times they don't. Yeah, <laughs> you kind of a lot of times when you talk to these people because they're not being this is not a common question they're being in. So you really yeah. need to educate yourself and say, you know, this is what I'm looking for. This is what you have to give me. Um, so just almost like advocate for yourself. And yeah, you can go through there, but it's a lot easier if you just go through them. Um, it was just like Colorado naturalization, uh, whatever their court is called just ask talk to the manager or something like that um see so if you can get them that way okay because i'm making a trip there that's why i wanted to do this is to figure out what exactly i need to oh, okay and you don't even have to make a trip there you can just do it over the phone well I, i'm going to see my family so oh, okay, okay. <laughs> i'm going for that and i was like oh, trip. okay <laughs> yeah, that's fine <laughs> well okay, have fun. thank you though i appreciate that. i appreciate yeah. the help no <laughs> All right, let's see. So the first order is to get your Italian relatives naturalization through the U.S. Census to find if you qualify. Is the U.S. citizen and is it the U.S. citizen and immigration services? Uh, I'm not really quite sure this question here. What what is this question asking? So the census. If you wanted to go to the census record here. Yeah, where how I find the census record to find when they were naturalized. Sure. What's your family's name? Alassie, I-L-A-S-I. Hold, hold on a second. Let me just go to, where, where, where were they living? Let's go with that first. What New state? York. New, York. New York. What county? I think New York City, but I don't know. New York City also has a really good naturalization record collection. So if you go on family search, um, you would go <coughs> a couple different things. You can go down here. And you can click on the naturalization index. You can click on anything that has the word naturalization here. Naturalization records, Eastern naturalization petitions. Um, okay. Lots of good stuff here. And then also too, what, uh, what year were they around in with the, nat the um, were they in like the 1920s or so? Uh, I think before, well, what's the time period of the well, next person he was born in like 19 around 1908 or 1910. I'm okay. guessing he, that he was four years old when they came. So, and he was born in 1904. So okay. I'm guessing 
and he was born in Italy in 1904. And what was the family's last name? Alassi, I-L-A-S-I. I-L-A-S-I? Yes. And you know the first name of anybody in there? Joseph. It's my grandpa's name. It was probably Giuseppe. You're right, you're right. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, and oh, and you said 19 what? 19. Well, he was born in Italy in 1904. Okay. Thanks. Okay, no results under that name. But it's working with Illis. Is it the wrong date of his birth? I'm not sure. Did you say A? What, what was it? A I L? It gave no, me some. Uh, yeah, I L A S I. Okay. Oh, it automatically changed it. Okay. Try Joseph. And also to keep in mind that with these census records, when you're dealing with um, immigrants, they often are not pronouncing things properly. The person doing it, it's only as accurate as the information of the person giving the information. Um, so five-year-old Giuseppe could have come to the door and he could have been the one they would have seriously they would ask a child um, you know when did your family come to this country how old is your dad he's 81 how old is your mom she's 21 um, it's only as accurate as the person giving this information so I would check the different um, but you can play around with this um, and check the different census years do you have to apply to to be naturalized when they say naturalized it's not like you lived here so long you're automatically in no you have to apply you have to go through a whole process so you would have to do that mm -hmm. i'm guessing that i don't qualify because my mom was born in 1930 okay so i would think that from that time that he was born till then he probably would have got his citizenship so the 19 uh possible yeah okay yeah you could play around well, well, i should look at the other counties or other places not just new york city like i should look in my yonkers they, my mom grew up oh. in westchester county so oh okay yeah westchester county archives check there um, i'm sorry i have another question about um do i need to have the naturalization papers of my grandmother who was a U.S. citizen, but lost her citizenship because of the time period. They got married during that time period where everyone lost, every American-born woman lost their citizenship. Sorry, the because they, mm -hmm. So am I going to have to have her naturalization papers along with her, with their marriage papers, or do I not worry about it and just think about my grant? Yeah, just through her because uh, now it's your grandfather's line is the one you're going under. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, you don't need hers because usually the okay. women would not have their own naturalization papers anyway. Okay. They'd be All grandfathered right. in under their husband. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or any? I have a question. Sure. Um, I have three um, grown up kids, and I noticed that you can only make an appointment for two people at a time. No, it's only one. Oh, uh, one? Because yep. I know in Philadelphia it said, um, Oh, really? Bring another person. Bring another person, like bring a friend or bring a person like who is also applying? Yeah, I think so because okay, they're best for all their information. Okay, that's cool. But um, anyway, so I could bring one person and then my other two would have to, um, like set up their own thing and go at a different time. Yes. So and they would have to create could, their own accounts on Prenota. And they could reference my information. Yes. As long as now are they both, are they all going through Philadelphia? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. Good. They Thanks. Provide their, bleh, provide their <laughs> own um, birth, marriage. And do they have kids? Uh, my son has two kids okay. that are underage. Okay. And then their birth, uh, certificates too okay but they don't have to go the kids don't have to go okay no, they, they definitely don't want kids running around there okay great <laughs> thank you sure 
anybody else well thank you everybody for uh for coming if you have any other questions um again i'll send this presentation out with the library so they can distribute it um and uh if you have any other questions feel free to email me whatever and uh thank you all very much for coming thank you